What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Friday. Friday. Yep. Definitely Friday. I looked at the camera like, what day is it? I, I didn't, wasn't quite sure either. It is Friday. Right now, we are currently in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Dat Chat. Of course, I was getting there. Don't oh, worry. Geez. I would never forget my lovely Dat Chat yep. that I go on every Tuesday night for The Bachelorette. And Dat Chat is the best right now. You can go to datchat.com slash barstool. You'll learn more about it. They're the new social networking app because obviously on Twitter, Instagram, you can write some things. Hey, say maybe you're slightly... Uh, tipsy like myself right now and you get online and you're you get on dat chat all, everything i write on there could be for five minutes no you are <laughs> maybe the biggest lightweight friend that i have i think it's confirmed you've had one glass of wine <laughs> I smell you. Yeah, yes so that's why it's Super like a mixture fair. of both um but Dat Chat's awesome because you can go on there like we talk about you can send nudes you can write in message groups do it in the all. office cutting stems um and it's just a lot of fun we People, love Dat chat we love Dat chat we love writing there during the bachelorette you can see our thoughts and we like to hear your thoughts too it has a great community feel as well right now we are in la we are and we are in a beautiful smack dab on selling sunset we, yes we i could see this house that we're in right now on selling sunset i, I could think. see the steam coming off the pool and i'm gonna jump in it later for sure but we are in a beautiful airbnb we're staying here because Two very exciting things, I yes. will say. Um, if if you're gonna watch any episode on YouTube, let it be these LA <laughs> this ones because be my one. God, the backdrop I, uh, on this is the beautiful. The backdrop is stunning. Please ignore the fact that I am in my hood and blanket. I'm freezing. It's fucking cold. We gotta have the whole door open for the ambiance, the pool. I get it. The shot looks great, but I'm cold. <laughs> you're cold, but it looks amazing. Yeah, and I know. You're comfy I know. in your blanket and your sweatshirt. Shout out Brie. That's her sweatshirt. Yeah, I'm it's wearing. Cool one. I'm wearing a. a uh, sleep when you're dead. Store it at barstoolsports.com. Um, it's a great sweatshirt. I've been eyeing this bad boy for a while. As soon as Brianna started wearing it in the office before I went on sales, like I need that one. Yeah, that's a sick one. Yeah. But we are here for two very exciting things. Obviously, we have the People's Choice Awards coming yep. up on Tuesday. Put some good energy out there, yes. folks. Maybe this is our year. Feels like a good year. We're feeling good about it. Obviously, thank you to all the people who voted every yep. day. We saw you guys. And also, by the way, the Spotify wrapped. You guys tagged us so many times, and it's so cool every year because because you're like, wow, people are listening yeah. to us. And there were so many that. people tagging us. And we love you guys for that. So that's really cool. We're going to go to the People's Choice Awards. Don't have an alpha yet, but we'll um, get there. I was there. about to say, if there's any, like, you know, stylists around the L.A. area who maybe want to help Rhea out. <laughs> by tomorrow. It like would be the, much appreciated. The awards are on Tuesday. I have no outfit. I ordered a couple things to the house thinking yeah. I'd get here. Not here. I, I, I just, I dropped the ball on this one. Yeah. And... We'll get there. You have an amazing outfit. Thank you. Let's talk I'm about excited. that. You I, have a great you know, outfit. I, I went to a store. Yes, you did. <laughs> I did not. I, I'm going to go in LA, though. No, I have no, to. We, There's yes, no choice. Are, Me and Noah. We're going to go. You know we're gonna go shopping. Noah also needs an outfit. Noah and I are going shopping tomorrow because we both need an outfit tomorrow. for the PCAs. Yeah. If well, anybody has some... Also, another call to action. <laughs> if anyone has some men's looks that they think Noah could wear, yeah. send him his way because he's got no inspo. He has Well, I've got an inspiration from others, but I just don't think any of them are right for me. Mm, exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. I said, that's right for Noah. We're going to vlog finding Noah and I outfits, and it'll be a lot of fun. I was saying now I can expense it because it's for content. Okay. <laughs> you Mr. Expense. You do that. Uh, but let's talk about the second thing, the second oh reason why we're here, which is super cool. We did it today. Yep. We interviewed the biggest guest yeah. by far. That we have ever had on this podcast. And it, it really isn't Just in even terms close. of fame. In terms of fame. Yeah. In terms of everybody knowing who this person is. Yep. The most famous person. Um, it was amazing. It was great. It, it was genuinely an awesome interview. Obviously, because when you get a really big guest, it's like, whoa, and it's the name, and it really draws people in. But then you're like, is the interview itself going to be that? Right, it's, right. It was amazing. It was really good. I was super, super nervous, but it all worked out. It was good. Usually, you know me before every interview. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I get the most nervous. You do, I, yeah. I don't know why. This one, I no felt- problem. I felt so good about this one for some reason. I don't know why. Just from the start, I was like, "This is this is going to be good," and it really was. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to wait any till more. we can talk about. It. I know we can't. We really can't give too much away. We can't really talk about it for a couple of weeks. And but when we can, 
we will tell all. Yeah, uh, like the, there's all only of what happened. They are just wildly famous. Yeah, correct. <laughs> like that's really the best way to put it. Yep, very very correct. And that's all I'm. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna agree with you because I'm. You know me. I'm a little loose lipped. I'm gonna give something away. Give a one hint. Give one hint. No, that doesn't I'm not give it away. giving anything away. Nope. Okay, fair. It's too, we're too far away. You're right. Like from when we're allowed to put it out, you know? You're right. Because by the time we get there, we're going to keep, we, we're going to basically be saying the person's name before. You're right. So let's keep it up. They That's are just it. like one of the most famous people in the entire yep. world. And, yep. and, and by far, like people, this is, okay, I'll say this. The question people ask me on Twitter, are they more famous than the Jonas Brothers? Yes. More famous than the Jonas and Brothers, yeah. I wouldn't even say it's really like yeah. a debate. In any the Jonas way. Brothers will always have my heart. They're my number one guys. But in fame wise, yeah, it's no contest. No contest. Anyways, uh, we're having a good time so far, I'd say. We are. It's been How was my driving? It's been good so far. Thank you. I would say good. Sometimes I would like you to, you know, a little more pep in your step. Why don't I did on the good. way there when you we did had on the pressure. way there when we were and on the way rushing. back, I was like, Yeah. Why? Why don't we all rate each other's behavior right now? About the beginning of the trip, and then at the end of the trip, we'll rate it again. What's been? What are you okay, guys picking behavior, up on? Behavior like what? Like, yeah, like well, things we have been all noticing about each other for the f- first two days. I I don't really want to do that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's it doesn't have to be bad. Okay, but it we, be, no. Well, I we think you've done a good job at driving. But we have. We <laughs> oh didn't even my talk god! About this no well, one yes. Natalie missed their flight. Well, this is what oh. I was trying to like hint to. Like, oh. well, let's talk about. Each other's behaviors about oh. the first two days of oh, the trip. Yeah. I just want to talk about. Is, I just want to talk about. There is something Noah that happened. I think we should get Noah and Natalie over here. I mean, not Noah, Natalie, Natalie, and Devin. Natalie and Devin got to get over here. They'll, they'll share a mic. Um, this is the first time we're gonna have Natalie and Devin on this podcast, and people always ask, like, "Let's get the whole team on here." So we're gonna get them because something happened. Something big happened the other day when we were traveling to LA. It was uh, Wednesday morning. And I think we may have talked about this. We talked about it because we got high, but we did not talk about it on here. Where we were booking flights and we booked a 1030 flight, 1025, or apparently 1020. It's one of those. Yeah. And Fran then changed her flight to later in the day for a more uh, 159, I think the flight was. That is correct. That 159 is exactly PM. what my flight was, yeah. <laughs> Kelly Martin was on that flight. Yes, Kelly Martin, Booker Kelly Martin was yep. on the flight. And... Uh, me Fran and Noah, abandoned us, basically. Fran, okay, no, so <laughs> Fran abandoned us, and she sent us, we, she sent us it, and we both were like, okay, we'll consider changing it. We have to look. We looked, and there were not enough seats for the entire group that was going. Who you see sitting here right now, or not sitting here, who you hear right now. The will consider it is for pretty loose. I was convinced you guys were going to change But the within two minutes, I said, I can't get it to load right now, and I'm just sticking with them. Noah? That is correct, but I thought like you were maybe going to like put in a little more effort than there the was, apps there loading. Was, what what is the changing. effort? We wanted to stay on the flight. <laughs> that was the thing. Like, if but you did the I math, didn't know that. It didn't say that when I changed my flight. Anyways, that's not really the big part of this story. So long story short for that was myself, Noah, Devin, and Natalie yep. stayed on the 1020, we'll say 1025 flight. I, for some reason like, on the app it's a 1020 but at, online it's a 1025 but all that's that was why good context of like for the like for a few days yes. leading up to the flight we were all like oh, giving Fran Fran shit, us, yeah. like, we were like oh Fran like, is we're gonna have a whole day in LA yeah. like she doesn't want to stick with the team yeah. um we're gonna get there way before you yeah I was, like, I was gonna, gonna take be the rushing. good room like yeah. I was saying that to you but yes like, yeah yeah on the side <laughs> <laughs> so me and Noah were really giving Fran shit and so we get to the airport on Wednesday morning I show up with Devin Honestly, we all showed up. At the exact we showed same up. At the time. Yeah. It was like eight thirty six. I would say around, very early, around eight thirty six, maybe a little before that, eight twenty six. The four of us got there around the same time. We're all right next to each other online. We get in easy peasy. We got a full hour well, now. Well, well, you're skipping over a part. Oh, okay. Maria abandoned us at the luggage. Like all she had to do was wait <laughs> for us for like five <laughs> seconds. She just walked and went. She was mad at me. She's got clear. No, 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 Fran. No, listen to this. Listen to this nonsense <laughs> they all had extra bags i had one luggage <laughs> devin goes devin goes the equipment. yeah they're for the, for equipment. the equipment they had extra bags yeah. for the equipment i'm sorry you're right <laughs> i should note that 
Devin goes, why don't you just come up with me or family? I said, yeah, I'm coming up with you. We'll do it together. You know, when you just go up with your whole family. I'm like, yeah, I'll come up with you. Through this? security? No, through the dropping oh, off the bag. Oh, the bag is dropped. That's fine. You travel with your party. Yes. Oh, my God. I did not know this was going to be the hardest task this worker has ever seen at the airport. <laughs> like, they have never... Well, like, Devin, your bag was like a billion pounds. Right? Okay, but yeah, that, that wasn't, that wasn't the even thing, oh. the bag. She just paid receipt. for it. It was very quick. She needed yeah. a receipt. I just needed a receipt because I did. I wanted to expense the bag and the second, well, the, specifically the second bag because it wasn't, it was equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the receipt printer wouldn't work and it was a whole thing and it was taking so long and then she had to do Natalie after and Natalie also had that. So they were like, Rhea, you just go. And I was like, okay. I'm just going to drop my bag off and go. Like, I'm not the ones with the extra bags. Like, I'm going to go through clear. Yep. So, yes, I did abandon you guys. But then we all met up. But you picked the, <laughs> the, the whole point was that you went and picked the, the restaurant that we were going to be at. This sounds okay, like, okay, okay. This sounds like but a murder mystery. <laughs> there's no way. I will jump in this for Rhea. Like I will jump in for Rhea here. There's absolutely no way you can put any blame on her picking a restaurant that's far away from the gate because we have flown out of that terminal a million times. How am times. I supposed Wait, to know? And Noah, how many times have Noah, we stopped at the pump? we have flown out of that terminal so many times where we've stopped at that restaurant and have known Every that Here's the, the thing. gate is far away from while, that restaurant. While we were running to the gate, I'm sorry. Wait, we were not going to get there. You're stopping But I'm just ahead. saying, I saw a million restaurants. That we okay, not. but here's the thing. You <laughs> yes, know that you, the you, we, we always go, go there. One. We go to Flatiron Tavern in LaGuardia, and yeah. we go to the Palm we, at JFK. Yeah, I mean, we, we never go out at JFK, so. We've gone okay, many times. Okay, but we times. have flown multiple times, especially to California, every single time from exactly that term. Exactly, and we go to the Palm every time. Yeah. So we go to the Palm, and... L- we were having an awesome breakfast. We all got the All American, and <laughs> Noah, Natalie, and I got mimosas. We're having a Which grand didn't old time. Which didn't affect anything. We, it yeah. did not affect <laughs> anything. It was only one drink. Only we one. only had one mimosa each, and none of us even finished it. I'll say, we were having a grand old time, and we're just hanging out. I go to the bathroom. I come back. I look at my clock. I'm like, and we all said at the same time. We were like, oh my god, the flight started boarding 15 minutes ago. We gotta go. We then passed Hudson News. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I said in the restaurant, I was like, well, we have to get snacks. No, I have to say the urgency in the Good restaurant Lord. was a negative five. Like, nobody was in any restaurant. You mean in the snack No, list? I would say, no, in the restaurant because we thought that we were on time. Oh, yeah, like, we I didn't like, even think. I was like, oh, really? We have to go? go. I feel like I was the only one urgent because I was like, can we get a check? Like, yes. I was like, yeah, yeah, the yes. entire time, yes. I so, felt like God, I was Devin, just, you got a little bit of me in you because no, I would have never let you go. I thought I was being like a little too, like, uh, uh, bitchy or like time. pushy oh no yeah you, you no no know. i was so like she, come on so we go to we pass hutton no i was like we gotta get snacks and we're like okay <laughs> no you say it, you say it the best uh well i mean i just like we weren't <laughs> it's not like we were rushing to get snacks we were like browsing the aisles i was like no, wait, comparing wait. things i'm like oh lifesavers like this candy like bugles no like, and then and then like, we go to one Dasani register water. and that oh, register Dasani didn't water. work so then well, the, reg- the, the, the lady was yelling the at us that she was mopping yeah, the, the floor. Lady. The cleaning lady got yelled at by the cleaning lady for walking in her mop line, I guess. Then we go to the other side and somehow everyone decides to find five more snacks they need to pick. Yeah, yeah. so we, we got so the many Dasani snacks. Water the Dasani, Dasani water, water that, that Noah got. So no, we get the Dasani snacks. Water. Now we got, and I'm glad I did this. When they were when they were putting the, the snacks in the bags, I started grabbing my snacks. So I was like, I'm putting my snacks in my bag. I didn't even know so that. So all of a sudden, we start... We start going to the gate and we're like, oh my God, we got to go to B36. If you've been to JFK, B36 is like the furthest one. It's and far. Devin's like, we got to run. No we got to run. So Devin is yelling at me like she's my coach. She's like, hustle, hustle, go, go. <laughs> I'm like, I got this. I'm in platform Ugg slippers and my ankles are about to break. We look back, Noah and Natalie casually walking. Devin, no. I was walking a, like fast. No, you were, no, no. we were walking. I we actually were, kept telling Natalie, we're fine. You don't no, need to be running. And no, Noah said to Devin, it. Noah said to Devin, why are you running? And then Devin asked me, at least five times on the way there do you think i'm being like too much about this like i feel like we're not being like we're gonna miss i said no devin you're right like this is bad like we really the doors are gonna close she was like are you sure you, are you sure i'm not being too much i, was I like, no you're know, not being at the all the thing is i know i was giving attitude that entire time like it is gonna be in the vlog i was like we need to go and like we get on the like what are the ramp things it's like an escalator the magic carpet just <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the magic carpet we get on the magic carpet and there's these people standing in front of us i was like ria it's faster just to run let's skip these because people are standing we were getting on the magic carpets and and 
dodging people. Yeah, I was like, like excuse me, excuse but me, But here's excuse the thing. Me. As fast as you guys claim to be running, we saw, like, I wasn't that far behind you. Like, mm-hmm. I saw you walk far on to the to plane. Like, anyways, you. anyways, you were clearly 28 <laughs> we, seconds behind we were, us. We know how far, yeah, we were 28 <laughs> no, we, seconds yeah, behind we, we were exactly, and, we, and the lady told us. Were you given that number by the gate? Yes, <laughs> yes they were. Yes. They told us. The lady, they, they were the lady so was like, mean you, for no reason. The, were, they were like 28 well, we seconds. We didn't say what happened. Dev, we get there. I ran in front of Rhea. Devin, yes. Devin was like, fuck, like Devin ran in front of me. It was every band for themselves. I will say, Devin <laughs> was, was listen, no, 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 no. Devin was leaving me behind. Big she time. every man for no, themselves. Devin looked, she didn't even look back at me. Devin was down there. And what then, if you had they, been the only one? They to said to me, I would have laughed so they hard. They said to me, they said to me, I would have been a little anxious. They but. said to me, hurry, hurry. And they were like, scan it, scan it fast. And I was like, oh my God, okay. They let me in. I didn't, we didn't even look back. And then they we were like, look back. we didn't look back. We didn't look back. No, we said, I did because I, I will. I when didn't. I first got at the thing to scan my thing, the lady like gave, I wasn't even giving an attitude. I was just huffing because I was I was running, and she was like, she was like, all right, hold on, wait for me. I was like, I didn't even scan it yet. She's like, scan it. When I went to scan mine, Rhea arrived, so I knew Rhea would like yeah. be like come. Yeah, she knew. But the, also, I saw you walk through, so I'm like, oh, like they got in. We're so like, we're, we're gonna get in. in. We get did in. You guys, question: Did you guys? We never discussed this. Did you walk or run when you watched us get in? I think we ran at the very end. We we like <laughs> okay I at think. the very end. So no okay. <laughs> Key here's, word. here's what no, I think happened. I remember walking and I had the bag around my neck and I was like, my legs, they're, they're going, but I'm staying Natalie's in the same very spot. short. Natalie's so, very short. Also, yeah, tiny. she kept saying she was in pain the whole no, time. So. I yeah. was complaining. I, like, it was bad. So we're going. My shoes are falling off my feet. And we finally see Rhea and Devin get in the gate. And so we kind of like had a sigh of relief. Yeah, like, like, oh, they got in. it. We made it. Like, <laughs> they're, not, they're not her gonna in. Just leave us. Like, which yeah, like, is there's what no happened. way. Like, we're on this plane. Like, it was like, oh, like. Here we go. Like, we're going to get on. Like, it's everything's okay. And then I sit down. I see I got a missed call from Noah. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, you Devin, didn't even answer me. Devin, I was sitting. Devin looks back at me on the phone. She goes, they missed it. I <laughs> couldn't oh, stop and- laughing. Like, I was <laughs> uncontrollably <laughs> laughing in my seat. We I'm looked, laughing right now thinking we, about it. Devin and I would just look back at each other. This is a five-hour flight. We just look back at each other randomly and be like, they missed it. <laughs> Which, objectively, very sorry for you guys. But for the vlog, it was hilarious. Now, what the- what happened when you guys got to the well, game? They told is, you there was oh 28 God. seconds. We kind of got more and more mad at you guys as time went on <laughs> because there was a second that flight. That sounds like projection. No. Yeah, no. For sure. You guys are just jealous. Why, You're jealous why? we ran because, faster. Because we had to tell them that literally we, we go to the gate and we try and scan our thing and there's just like big macho guy who like had, just took tall. so he much joy. He, he, he was so happy to tell us that we weren't <laughs> yeah. going to get on the oh, flight. Yeah, he was like getting off. On oh yeah. He was like, us li- not getting in. Literally. And so we're saying they were like, please I gotta let say, us if in. I was a gate attendant, I think I would also be so fucking also, thrilled to tell they, people they missed their flight. Think about how repetitive their day is. Yeah, exactly. It's fun. Natalie was you like, you get the two people who like come up and you're like, oops. Natalie you're was pulling late. out like every like idea that she could. Like she was being like, no, like we're not just going on vacation. Like we're working. And I'm like, you think that they're gonna let you in just because you're like Wait, we're working? I literally <laughs> asked like, can Wait. I pay you? I said, yeah, I will she said, pay I'll pay you. you. I'm like, no. I walked away. I was like, but when I answered the phone to talk to Noah because Noah was like I'm scared of Natalie all I hear like Noah was like yeah we didn't make it and I didn't know what to say because I just wanted to burst out laughing oh, and, man. which I think I did Yeah. and in the background I just hear Natalie saying like she was like oh so you're not even gonna she's just like going off she's like I fuck I'm trying to remember she's exactly what you're saying you're like people. oh so you're not even gonna like get us new tickets you're not gonna help us are you gonna help <laughs> us she's like so so you're just gonna you're just gonna fuck us over and you're not gonna help us I was so <laughs> mad I was so mad honestly like what but what we were going to say is that the, then oh, we were yeah. on standby yeah. for a second flight. <laughs> we're like just sitting there like crossing our fingers and we like see it all playing out. And it's like the same exact scenario. Like this girl comes in, her friend or whatever, like is not there, but she goes through and then waits. And it's like, oh no, my friend is like, she just stood and they waited. They were like, oh, like, like they were like looking down, like, okay, like we'll wait a few minutes. Like, <laughs> and we're like, why the fuck Sorry. didn't they do this? And then it happened for a Again, third time. It literally happened three On the third times. flight, and we were like, we're not getting on. Oh, also the second flight, there was one seat left, and yeah, you guys so didn't want to leave each other. I, yeah, I was like, that's fair. Which kind of shows our character. We no, didn't leave no. each other. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> Devin and I stuck together. That was mean. The funny thing is with the second flight is that 
when it was like the one person left and it was like, all right, Natalie, you can go. Like, it wouldn't make sense for me to go by myself, but it would make more sense for Noah to go because he could have picked up the car, the rental equipment. Like, he could have just done more things. It was like under his name. So I was like, Noah, go. And the lady was like, you need to decide now. Hurry up, quick, quick. And I was like, Noah, go. Like, you can, you can get the TV show. I, I, you I, was, get the I was a deer in headlights. Like, yeah. I really just- And go, the, don't wait for me. The lady <laughs> behind the counter goes, Go, you need to make a decision right now. <laughs> and he was like, uh, uh, um, I'll stay. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then we went to the health desk and she was like, you didn't go? Like, you should have definitely gone. <laughs> She's like, you're a fucking idiot. She's like, wait, you're telling me you were on standby for a flight and you said, no, thank you. Yeah. And then Literally, the third flight I'll happened. Wait for the next and one. Shout out Danielle from Terminal 4. Because Danielle from Terminal 4. She really, I think, just felt bad for us. And there were other people waiting too, but she picked us and just gave us two crew seats. They weren't even real seats. They yeah. just. So. On we the flight need, that Kelly and I, yes, that were we so we end yes. up going on the same flight. That as Kelly and I were originally on. That's, that's if cool. anyone's listening Thank and feels God. inclined to give Danielle from Terminal oh, yeah. Four at JFK a, gr- a great review, a good review, Apparently she would love that. Them. You could do oh, it for Delta. No, yeah, we, we, we we're gonna. Oh, we, we want we want more people. Yeah, yeah, important yeah, yeah. for Delta, for Delta, Delta. for Dan- Delta. Terminal Four, Danielle. That is very nice. Danielle's gonna appreciate that. Um, quite quite the beginning start to the trip. I certainly laughed at the text I got when I was still packing in my bedroom. Did you just in the group of Reeb of Reeb being <laughs> Reeb-ing. I am very How sorry, Noah. Were- but what is the Airbnb address? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, that- I'm incredibly oh, sorry, yeah. but I need the Airbnb. Not even like two seconds after I'm me saying that we missed the flight. What is the Airbnb oh, so address? Sorry. I was like, what's the oh, address? Fuck. And then I like I was still just being like, oh my fucking god, we missed the flight, and you're just like, what's the address? <laughs> I mean, I said to Devin, I texted her on the side. I said, I know this is a tough time for them, but like if we get, if they got, Noah said he doesn't buy Wi Fi. So if he gets on a plane and he doesn't have Wi Fi and we can't get into the Airbnb, I'm going to be upset. So I'm going to get this information out now. Fair enough. You said you don't buy Wi Fi, but then you did. And then I did because I was just like, this day sucked. I need to like be on the internet. (laughs) I need, I need more Wi Fi. How shocked were you when you saw us walk on? Because it was like very last second. It, um, (laughs) uh, but I, I knew before because Natalie said, you guys were coming oh, on. Oh, we said I sent a picture to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I knew, you, oh, like, uh, I was waiting for you yeah. to come on. Like, I was waiting to watch you guys come on the plate. If we hadn't gone on, I probably would have had a full-on meltdown. I just want to say that um, I'm very sorry for your guys' long day. I, I apologize as well. I apologize for the long day because that would be so stressful. And I, we, I, that wasn't the we, end of what I was going to oh, say. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that we had a great day here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna apologize because I was gonna say no, after no. we showered to get ready to go out, I looked at you and I was like, "This entire time they still haven't sat down." Like I was like, "That yeah. sucks." Yeah. However, I will also say if we want a little jab at the end, we will be me and we would be completely silent, not talking about anything. One of us would start laughing and we'd just be like, "What?" And we'd be like, "They missed the flight." <laughs> and we were like, "We were with them and they missed the flight." The pool in boy the came. The pool in boy. The pool boy. I, they, I mean, we, I missed the flight while being in the airport. I I've text. never missed a flight ever. Just like that out there. I got to text well, my friend at home, and she first was like, "First time we've traveled. You guys, we've traveled for work in separate groups, literally." And my friend was like, "Wait, Natalie, you didn't tell us that you missed your flight and you were in the airport. In the airport, yeah. Just waiting, and then yeah. you missed your flight. Yeah. Well." We all made it eventually. Yes, we're we here. Did. We are here. And honestly, it could have been a lot worse. In, For like realistically, way? you got on the second flight. Like yeah. you didn't get on the Third. one right after. Yeah. But you got on the second oh, yeah. one. We like, have to it wait for like a 6 p.m. flight. Yeah, yeah it could have it could have been way worse. Which I thought we worse. were. I was very convinced. I'm like the whole like trip your flight was 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, you would have just gone to we, dinner without us. But we need you. <laughs> yeah. you know? In your hearts. No, I don't think we would. No, we weren't going to go to dinner because as soon as we got here, I was the first one to say like, hey, should we like push this dinner because You're telling me that if, if you. No, Rhea, did I not? Three and Kelly, no, you, you wouldn't have gone to dinner. No, we wouldn't have. We totally would have. You would have gone to dinner. I would have gone to dinner. But we did. We did ask you guys. We were like. She also hey. went on the other flight. I stuck with yeah. you guys. True, true. <laughs> Also, I would have gone to dinner. Our crew seats were like real seats. I know it sounds like they were like the seats. Like oh, although, although our TVs they were didn't seats, work. They just TVs said crew on, crew on them. Uh, crew on them. I saw it. TVs there. didn't work though. The TVs didn't work. That's that was mm. our. That's not even a complaint. I'm just grateful that we were on the plane. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We made it. I felt like has we're anyone here. here seen Argo? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what it felt like. Yeah. Like at the end of that movie I where mean, he like you don't know until you're in the air like. 
if you're gonna be on the plane. Yeah, That's what yeah. it felt like. I even when I sat down, I'm like, they might come and take us off. Let's get into the show because I see the steam coming off the hot tub, oh and I'd love gosh. to get in. Yes. <laughs> it's gonna be like freezing cold when you. Put I your saw hand the in. steam coming out of yeah. Noah's mouth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We well, anyways, guys. yeah. This has been a fun recap of the yes. beginning of Thank the trip, and don't worry, us. we will recap the end of the trip after the People's Choice Awards. Yes. And you'll be able to see this all in real time when when the vlog comes out. When the vlog comes out. In Rhea's world. In Rhea's world on YouTube. Subscribe to Chicks in the Office on YouTube because you can watch this here too and it looks really nice. Yeah. Look at that fucking steam. You can also watch the full live tour video is out as well. Oh, yes. Very good job. Anyways, let's get into today's show. We have a little Kardashian recap. Kanye West posting about Kim Kardashian on his story. We have a bunch of topics to catch up on from... We haven't done topics in like two weeks. Yes. We also have Kardashian, TikToks, P and North taking over. Yep. They are taking over TikTok as well as I guess Courtney and Kim. Um, Clayton, the official Bachelor announcement has been released. Rihanna and ASAP, Rocky, pregnancy rumors. Yeah. And a great interview. Great. With Teresa Caputo, which we'll put a little trigger warning before because we do yeah. talk about a lot of some death death and serious yeah, yeah. topics yeah. in there. Yeah. So just want to throw that out there. But I think it was a very, very interesting conversation that everyone will enjoy. So let's get into it. Starting off with Kanye. It is holiday season, which means you guys got to start thinking about gifts. Everyone has to start thinking about gifts. I got to start thinking about gifts. I think we all need to start thinking about gifts. And specifically, you know it, because we talk about it every year, all year round, not all year round, but Every time around this year, this comes up and I hate to bring up my parents as an example, but I have to every time because of the last time that I found out my mom bought my dad Manscaped products and I was excited because obviously we love Manscaped, but I was like, whoa, mom, that's kind of too much information. But at the same time, I respect that. So if you want the man in your life- been begging me to bring one home. Yeah, and you did. I I saw you steal one from the office and say, I'm taking this home with my man. I saw that. So right now if you think the man in your life needs to be manscaped or yourself if you're a man yourself you need to be manscaped go to manscaped.com slash chicks and you will get yourself a deal that's 20 percent off at manscaped.com slash chicks you'll get the best deals you'll find the lawnmower 4.0 in there in the performance package 4.0 which has everything the lawnmower they got the ear whacker the nose trimmer they got the stuff that makes you smell good which is also very important you don't want to smell bad so go to manscaped.com slash chicks and get yourself 20 percent off right now we love manscaped a lot going on in the kardashian world per yeah. usual <laughs> the smoke coming yeah, off it's my, actually really funny it like looks like we're in like the, we like, might as well be in Arctic. fucking Aspen right now. Like, I don't it's know what's insane. happening. There's what's straight happening up steam right now. coming out of our... <laughs> <laughs> There's smoke coming out of that our mouths. That is so good. Uh, I thought but, those was Southern California. Yeah, it's cold, but the pool Fuck, is hot. it's cold. Yes. Anyways, Kanye West posted on his Instagram. I can't stop looking at my... But it's also because it's a, it's a combo of us talking, plus I think the steam from the pool is yes. coming into the It's house. really insane. Um, anyways, Kanye West posted on his story about Kim Kardashian. He posted a TMZ article and he said that he's basically still hoping that him and Kim get back together. Yeah. This all happened over Thanksgiving. We haven't really had a chance to talk about it. It's crazy because he's posting that on this, on his story while at the same time, like Kim's at the Beverly Hills hotel with Pete Davidson, like getting breakfast, you know, they're like, they're, they're doing their own thing. They're still clearly got something going on. Um, and Kanye is just putting out these messages for Kim where it's just like, you just never know. And it's gotta be so hard for Kim. Like I feel bad because you have to have some kind of like, maybe guilt I don't know because it's like I'm having fun I'm doing what I want to do but when you're getting thrown like the I want our family to be together it's like you make her feel bad for the kids yeah I feel like she just wants to be happy with her life which I think she is just having fun right now yeah Davidson all of that and obviously when she's just reminded constantly by Kanye and then other people telling her like who to date right like I and it's you like separate your family it's such a new thing for her too like It's not normal for for Kim. She was with Kanye for so long. So even though she's dealt with public 
scrutiny for so long. This is so different than the kinds that she's used to. Like, this is just about who she's dating, which she has had before, but not for a really long time because she was with Kanye for a while. So obviously that's sad. And then, you know, since we're going to talk about their TikToks, you know, these kids are on the internet. Okay. Yeah. P and Court. North and Kim TikToks are taking over. Kim and North. Kim and North, sorry, excuse me, um, are taking over because they need to have parental supervision because you're not allowed to be a certain age Kim on TikTok. Kim and North, right? Kim and North. Yeah, yeah. Because I forget because it's P and Court. P and Court. But I think it's Kim and North. Kim yes. and North, yeah. Kim has to be first, first. come on. It has to, yeah. Um, they're posting these TikToks. They're on the internet very clearly. So, like, not only... Are they having fun doing that? But they get to see everything written about their family. They can read now. They know what's going on. I don't think North is. Maybe not North, but Penelope, Mason. Mason, definitely. I don't think Penelope and Penelope and North are still I, nine years old. I like, like that some, young. some of the TikToks, it'll just be the whole thing is North doing something. And then the very end, it flashes Kim just so people know, like, she's involved. Yeah, like, I'll say P's got a better TikTok page. She knows what she's... Uh, She's doing a little bit more than Penelope more. is very artistic. <laughs> you can tell she is already the, um, you know, she will be the successor of Poosh. Like she's already got the the creative director in her. North's a visionary like Kanye. We may not understand. She's it's abstract. Yeah, it's cha- may, yeah, it's a way more chaotic energy, yeah. but it's entertaining. She's a genius, and um, we may not understand it, but it's her vision, and we're gonna let her have that. I understand P just has a little bit more better camera work. And I'm not here to criticize these kids' TikToks, but I find myself watching P's a little bit more. It is pretty crazy, though. Like, Like they definitely... (laughs) (laughs) One's just, like, right down the middle, throwing throwing hits all the time. And then the other one's, like, you really got to appreciate their art. (laughs) Well, I think they also definitely, like, had TikToks that they were posting on. And... I guess you know that technically that breaks the TikTok rules. You're supposed to be 13, and so and those TikToks kept getting discovered, and like people kept posting them, and then they would get deleted, and then the new ones. So I feel like Courtney and Kim like got together, and they're like, "All right, we'll do like joint TikToks for them, managed by us, so they can still like have fun and put out the videos that they want to do." And now they're like verified with millions of followers. Um, it's insane. I, the first time I the torch found, is already being passed. The first time I found P's TikTok, she had 64,000 followers. Yeah. They millions. The now. next day she had millions. Yeah, I was like, they're, wow. They're verified. Was, they're millions. Um, P Penelope, like, and this is the thing, right? And it's going to happen now all the time because they are doing this stuff. Penelope has like long nails. I don't know if they're her nails or fake nails or whatever, but she's got like long nails. And the the internet was freaking out. The TikTok comments, oh, she's so young to have those nails. Blah, blah, blah. Like, what get? What are you <laughs> getting a mad good at? Good representation of the internet. It, That's exactly yes, how like, they sound. It, it, it was just like, really? We're gonna get mad at this fucking nine year old's nails? I'll say this: when I first found this TikTok, I was like, whoa, Devin, look, look at P's TikTok, and she goes. There's no way Penelope has nails like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it turns out <laughs> no, she, she did. certainly does. She does. Um, I I used to wear. She's got fake a makeup na- tutorial on yeah. there. <laughs> my mom let me wear fake nails as a little. I mean, those are like she's getting them done. Yeah, yeah. But my mom let me buy the tips at the store and like yeah, let me put them yeah. on when I was a kid. So I feel like it's normal, especially when you're know, like a like, thing why is would- frowned upon. I don't. Well, I guess. I thought, like, apparently, I thought, I, could, I thought I heard about like earrings. Like people, like parents want to wait for their kids to get yeah ears that, pierced. Yeah. But nails, I feel like whatever. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. There, I guess like, maybe there's know, just like forever. a like a weird they close up connotation against long nails, like up, for young it. kids. I don't really know. Maybe it's bad for because it could be damaging. It's to bad your for your nails. Na- yeah, well, it's definitely bad for your nails. But <laughs> so maybe that's why. Um, Who knows? Yeah, we're talking know. logistics about it's these really, nails. <laughs> yeah, it just seems it seems pretty absurd. But they have some unbelievable TikTok clout going on right now. That's it's just the two of them are just. Oh man! How many followers does it have, or each of them have? Like over two mil- I The last time I looked, they were both around like two million. Damn. It's probably even more now. But these kids, man, they're growing up. Kim posted a very funny Instagram videos. Like I was laughing at them of Dream and Chicago. And they the elf on the shelf wasn't on the shelf. And she was like, why is the elf? You're not supposed to touch the elf. And they like blamed everyone else. It was hilarious. Dream was like, North did it. Stormy did it. I <laughs> love like, that throw all your cousins under the bus and do I, it i like when we get to see like behind the scenes like that 
Yeah, it is. It is, it is very, very cute. Um, and we're going to see a lot more TikTok content. And it is nice seeing them all together. And I think, you know, family wise, it wasn't expected because this wasn't expected. But we did see um, Kim and Kanye and North all together at the I guess it was technically like a memorial, but also last line, his last um, spring 2022 line for Louis Vuitton for Virgil Abloh, who passed away last week. Incredibly sad, like so truly shocking. It really came out of nowhere. I was sitting at the, I was at the Eagles game uh, with my brother and my parents and JB turned to me and was like, holy shit, Virgil is dead. And I was like, what? It just, it it was crazy news. So, and, it, it, and honestly, it's so sad whenever things come out like this, where it's like they were battling cancer for years and nobody knew. Nobody knew, yeah. And to think of somebody working as hard as he does and then to not tell anybody about that just because it's like he just wants to live his life as this normal yeah. person who's not being treated a certain way or whatever it may be the reason why and yeah. just working so incredibly hard and being so talented all the time and you can tell the way that people talk about him and the way people were honoring him after it's like this really was such a special person it's in- incredibly sad yeah you could really see how many people he's touched by how many and I know social media is can sometimes be a bad gauge for these things but in this case I think it was a good one because so so many people posted about their relationship with him and their interactions with him and how amazing of a person and his kind soul and you know the sac- like how he was so willing to help other people and collaborate with people and um had just had these great relationships with all these people and yeah it was it's just so, I mean, he's, you know, his wife, two kids, really, really, really sad. And we have been seeing, um, that was like a big thing in Miami. They did a whole big tribute to him. It was beautiful. I mean, yeah. they had like sky writers and, um, you know, the Virgil was here and all that. It's just like, it, it was like making me cry seeing all of it. Cause that big like statue of him really just like, uh, just somebody who, was so influential it's just so hard to lose anybody so young but especially someone who had made like such a crazy impact on fashion and culture and everything um at so at such a young age and then to like fucking cancer just is the worst yeah it is really incredibly sad but i think you said it the best like you can just tell the impact that he's had on every single person and and Social media, obviously, you're like, how can you really say everything you feel about somebody? But yeah. the way that people put him into words, yeah. I think you could just really feel it. So obviously, just very sad. Yeah, definitely. So we got the official Clayton official. Bachelor announcement, and I fucking hated it. <laughs> I hated it so much. The um, I just, I really don't have a lot to say about this. What I just want to say is I I cannot believe that they just recycled basically the same. The promo picture is Clayton with a bunch of cute little Frenchie puppies or what's that pup. And it's identical to Colton's promo picture of him with golden retriever puppies. It's like, are you kidding me? All we know is to take the the same looking dude with a very similar name to Colton. We're going to have him take pictures with puppies. It's the same shit. And consider him an underdog? Uh, yeah. What is underdog what about Clayton? What makes him an underdog? Clayton is a very attractive, Handsome, tall, white, tall male, white man. Uh, Rodney that could played... have been an under, underdog. What? I feel like Rodney. Rodney Rod- was the one who who actually spoke about being an underdog yeah. right, on the that show. That was like his thing. Yeah. Um, Clayton was an ex-NFL player. Who even gets that close to even, like, maybe he didn't even Michelle really play in the Dunton, NFL. Michelle Dunton, that makes him an underdog? Yeah, the, he didn't even really play in the NFL. I don't know. I don't, don't want to yeah, say he didn't no, play no. in the NFL, but like. He didn't. He didn't? I'm pretty sure he didn't. I have no idea where he played in any sort of football, but it's way further than most people make it. No, talk about it on the show. Oh, oh we're talking about he, his NFL No, no, crown. I know, I know. Oh, he made it. I mean, they barely showed their relationship. He made it far, yeah. but it's not like we knew anything about them as a couple. Not an no, underdog. No, no, but I'm saying he's not an underdog. Like, he, he, yeah. he's not like... Right, no, he's not a grocery oh, store we were Joe. He didn't no, fucking get sent home on the agreeing. first night. <laughs> yeah. We're all saying uh, the same stuff. Yeah, we're, we're all we're all talking. We're all saying the same. I'm sorry, thing. I think it might be me. I'm talking in a very intense tone. No, even we're all saying the same thing. Agreeing. This guy is not an underdog. 
Um, he's not an underdog at all. And so I hated this promo. It's like, I'm not I'm not upset by him being The Bachelor. I think it's gonna be a fine season. Yeah. I hate the way they're promoting it promoting it as this as if this is some guy Clone we season. have never seen before. Yeah. He I, I mean, it's insane that they're like underdog, a story we Where's the story at though? Because it seems like he's just a normal ass yeah, dude normal who guy. didn't make it yeah. on the show and wants kids really bad and like and want, likes you puppies. Know, fucking wants love like the rest of the world. <laughs> right? He wants kids. He wants a lot of. He yeah. Want, he wants someone to find him special. So do I, Clayton. I could. Not <laughs> I'm not an underdog. You're an underdog. <laughs> I just it just blew my mind when I saw the side by side of that promo picture next to the Colton po- promo picture. I think we've said enough. Colton's Netflix documentary comes out uh, today. Oh, yeah. And, Six uh, episodes. All I'll say is uh, the New York Times did a profile on him, and they posted an Instagram. And oh, I didn't look at, obviously, every comment because there was thousands, but a majority of them were like, we gave this guy a show. And I, 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 the rumors are that Apparently, Cassie was pretty upset about this because she's like trying to move on with her fucking life and is like, oh, good. Now I have this guy on TV now talking about like our relationship and he stalked me and I had to get a restraining order. And it's like, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that, that there's that. So like, why don't we do it all over again <laughs> with Clayton? Yeah. Oh, well, let's hope for a different outcome. <laughs> Frey, you know what I can go for right now? What? I'm really craving oh, I some know. chocolate. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm having a little, yeah, little red. Yeah, yeah. And with a little red, mm. I like a little chocolate. A little peanut butter cup. A little peanut butter cup from GNC. You know they have amazing peanut butter cups that we are all obsessed with. We got them sent to us and we've been eating them at the office and people have been stealing them off our desk. You yep. know, we say, don't touch them. We want to eat them. They're gone. They're gone like this. Because people just love them because they taste so good. And you can go to GNC.com or you can go to your local GNC store. Buy snacks like the peanut butter cups or the bars. They have protein in it. They're going to get you through the day. They're going to get you moving faster, quicker, sharper. Yep. They got the best snacks and the best flavors. Vitamins. Um, they got their brain fog. Protein stuff. Like powder. They, have, they, they have everything, GNC. Right. So go to GNC. Uh, on online or go to your local GNC store and make sure you are checking out all the products Did they you got. Have a GNC in your mall, duh. Obviously, I was okay, at the mall just the other making day. sure. Walk past. GNC. I also have a GNC. In Spotted my mall. those peanut butter cups a mile yep. away. Yep. So go check it out. So everyone was sending us this Rihanna and ASAP yeah. Rocky pregnancy rumors from a bunch of websites and sources that we never even refer to ever. But everyone was like, it was "Oh my a god, this random must be. Instagram account." It. it It really made no sense why everyone just was believing this right away, but you hate it. You hate to see it because it literally just stemmed from a dress she was wearing. Yeah. A dress she was wearing and the way she had her hands like on her stomach. Like she just had her hands on her stomach in a picture and everyone was like, she's pregnant. It's already been debunked. I think Dumas posted that somebody saw them out um, at dinner in November and she was smoking weed. Yeah, and there is also a picture going around that allegedly is a DM with a fan where she wrote, Rihanna wrote, um, she said, <laughs> the girl wrote to Rihanna, can I come to the baby shower, sis? True or not, your babies are going to be beautiful. Sorry, everyone's up in your uterus right now. And she wrote back, ha, stop. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't come to the first 10 baby showers. Y'all breed me every year, damn it, LOL. She's basically like, she's like, every fucking year they say I'm pregnant and nope, <laughs> not pregnant. You breed me every year. You breed me every year That's, is a hilarious line. She's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and and honestly, it's also crazy. And it's it took over the headlines of the fact that she, the picture came from her receiving an award for being a national hero for Barbados. And so like, this is a monumental moment for her. Like she's getting a national hero award from the country uh her country and everyone's like oh my god you see that picture she's pregnant it's insane obviously i wanted it to be true because an asap rocky and rihanna yeah. b- uh, baby would be the most perfect baby on the entire planet but didn't you feel like as soon as we saw those like as soon fake. as i saw those instagrams i was like there no, no this is there's fucking no fake. way asap rocky and rihanna pregnancy would be revealed by some fake ass tabloids if they're pregnant they're gonna announce it in the coolest fucking way ever or we may never know like 
It's ASAP Rocky and Rihanna. Let's let's be clear yeah. about who we're talking about here. They're not fake tabloid people. I know. So for all the people who thought, oh my God, here it comes. People- Rihanna would like you to know, hold the phone and please stop breeding her every year. <laughs> we have an awesome interview with the Long Island medium, Teresa Caputo. Before we get into that, we do want to put a little trigger warning on the interview. You know, she's a medium. We talk a lot about death, suicide, ways... People die. Um, so if that's something you're uncomfortable with, just want to put that out there. It's a great interview. Uh, we are fascinated by what she does. So we're going to get into that. But guys, you know, we're talking about the holidays. It's the holiday season. It's chilly. It's a little chilly right here. And there is just a little <laughs> bit can't more. can't stop saying it. Yeah. A little more. You know it's my favorite word. I say chill a million times. There's a little more cheer, chill in the air, which means... The beer man is back in town. It's all part of Coors Light's holiday mission to bring the chill and make spirits bright. Beer man's here to remind you that your chill is out there this holiday season and that you deserve a cold one. Yep, you heard me. Beer man is back. You deserve a cold Coors Light. The mountains on the cans and bottles even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. It's our favorite beer. It's cold lagered, cold filtered, cold packaged. Literally, once again, saying it again, literally made to chill. When we get my my favorite time for a nice Coors Light is football games. Uh, I was at the Eagles game last week, got a nice Coors Light, and I didn't I didn't care. I was freezing. It was cold out. Did not stop me from drinking my Coors Light. So when you need to chill out this holiday season, reach for a beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash chicks. Always celebrate responsibly. It's coming from the Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right, everyone. We are here with a very special guest. We have Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium herself. Also, this is her first podcast guest appearance in person. So this is a big deal. Big deal. Welcome to the show. Well, it's a big deal because I'm just in chicks in the office. So that is a big deal. And let alone in person. So. Oh, and you look amazing. I can't believe I'm seeing this hair in person. I know. It's Everyone like it's, thinks I wear a wig, but it's it's real. No, like, I can, we can it. see can it. I touch it's it? Re- yeah, you can, can I touch, touch the top it? of it? Yeah, yeah you can touch it. I'm going to lean gonna over and touch the top of it. Wow. How long does it take you to do that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's that real. Like, maybe like 40 minutes, half hour. Half if I want to be extra fancy. What does it look like when it's not like that? Just take a look. Straight? Just take a look at my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you have any um, hairspray brand deals? Uh, no. How is that? I, I, I how don't, is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. That's, really someone's got to set that out. up they're, for you. They're, they're really because missing out. Reached seriously, out num- numerous times, and I've used the same hairspray mm-hmm. for since the eighties. And it does so its job. So I brought the hairstyle, the hairspray. I brought it all from the 80s right here. Which hairspray is it? No free ads, I'm not going to say Yeah, it right she now. can't now say it. No, I'm not going to say okay, it. Okay, tell us after. Until I'll they start pay, until they start paying her, she can't. Yeah, you're <laughs> she, right. You're right. She, she knows it on what air. she's doing right now. She knows what no. she's doing. Well, obviously, you're a huge deal, not only everywhere, but I'm from Long Island. So yeah. growing up, it was like, oh, my God, the Long Island medium. Like, people knew where you lived. Put and, Long Island on the map. Yeah, you really <laughs> did. And, like, you were talked about quite like oh my god like should we drive past her house not saying i ever did that not to be creepy yeah she's looking at me like yeah you did you may have done that (laughs) no i didn't i swear but what was that like for you because it's obviously very weird when you become like the long island medium now everyone wants to know where you live everyone's tracking you down right because they know you're on long island well it's still weird yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i i when people like oh my god i'm a huge fan i've been i'm like really you you know about me like I still it's still weird to me Mm -hmm. I I can't explain it it's you know because I think it's because at the end of the day I didn't do what I do to be on television or to be well known this is who I am and I don't know any different so how did you get in touch with these abilities that you have like wait, did it happen when you were younger because I feel like a lot of these stories I've been to a few mediums before and it's like when they were younger, they started feeling these things and then mm-hmm. they go to classes. What was it like for you? Right, so that's exactly what happened with me. So I can remember seeing spirits in some four. I always remember seeing someone standing at the end of my bed. When we would have babysitters over, I'd be like, oh, did you see the woman? Tell her to move out in front of the TV. Uh, 
granted that babysitter never came back yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I always saw things, felt things. Uh, my parents never made a big deal about things. I would say to my mom, I don't feel right. I don't feel like I belong here. Mm. I feel different than everyone else. And my mom would say, well, you're not adopted. You belong to this yeah, family, yeah. so stop feeling that way. And I come from a very spiritual family, faithful family. And I struggled with my gift once I found out um, I wasn't, I was about 28, 29, that not only that I had the ability to connect with my own loved ones, because that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. Yeah. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what I do because I don't want people, I don't care if people believe in me or what I do. I want them to believe in an afterlife. I want them to believe in themselves. I want them to know that all those things that go on around them that they think that are odd or weird or maybe just a coincidence or they just think of their loved one that has died, that that is a little hello from heaven. Yeah. And now, obviously, do you have your own opinion of what the afterlife is like now because I've, that's always the question right where do we go when we yeah. die but now that you're in touch with these spirits do you feel like you may have an idea I just know that I'll be greeted by my loved ones that have gone on yeah. before me and I'll find out when I get there yeah because I think we can imagine what it's like but I don't really know mm -hmm. yeah and Rhea I feel like has always had a little bit of a fascination with death so it is it is yeah. very interesting yeah. um where i can't it just, wrap my head around it i think yeah. about it way too often and like i said i've been to a few mediums before and it just always blows my mind because yeah. and i totally believe it obviously because how can you not when you hear these stories and just going myself and like them knowing things about my grandmother who's mm -hmm. coming down telling me things that nobody else would know right. and you're like how is she telling my mom mm -hmm. to stop using the jarred sauce? Like, why would she <laughs> even know yep. that? I didn't tell her that. So for me, I think what scares me is Isn't like, I'm like, Italian. it's stop so Italian. using the Literally, jarred sauce. a medium said, tell your mom to stop using the yep. jarred sauce. I was mm -hmm. like, what the fuck is going on? Put the rayos uh, down. Yeah, literally. <laughs> but it's like, I'm always like, what? It scares me so much because I'm like, what happens, you know, after we die? But then... I find comfort in talking to a medium because I'm like, well, if I can get a message from my grandma, that means that like, yeah. it's not like she's just gone. Her right. spirit is still here. And you then can send messages yeah. to your loved ones. Right. And I think that's the thing that I really want everyone to know because life is hard enough. And then especially, and no matter who we lose or how they die, young or old, whether we watch them suffer for years with a disability or they die suddenly, yeah. we're left with these burdens and guilts. Because that was one of the things that I struggled with. I'm like, okay, this is great. I'm born with this gift. But who the heck is going to want to come and see a medium and connect with their loved ones that have died? I could not understand that for the life of me. But I learned that, unfortunately, we are left with all of these negative emotions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they don't give us the ability to heal. So I chose to use my gift for healing purposes. I only wanted to be able to deliver messages that will help someone to be able to embrace mm -hmm. life after the loss of a loved one. Yeah. I think that's a common misconception is that mm -hmm. people sometimes think it's a bad thing. They're like, yeah. you know, psychic medium, like they're going to tell you something bad's going to happen to you. And it has never been my experience or I don't know right. about other people, but it's always a positive thing. And I think it's not only comforting to know somebody that you love passed away has these messages for you, but also, like I said, being afraid of death yourself. Mm -hmm. You're like, you can still, there's some sort of afterlife there. Like, it's not just over. Exactly. When you, it's like when you're doing a reading and someone's coming through to, to you know, the person that's sitting, sitting with you, do you ever like censor what you share no or you just you, everything goes to that's that person. not my job yeah my yeah. job is to do i find and try to find a delicate way right of delivering right. a message yes yes um you know it's very very hard i always say to people i make what i do look very easy yeah it's the hardest thing that i have to do is to stand in front of them mm -hmm. and channel their loved ones um and there are crazy ways that people pass, yeah. you know, when someone is is murdered or, you know, I mean, I can I can feel things right now, but we're in a we're in a space of there's so many people, so many people, oh, so yeah. many people. Oh, and yeah. I there there's two souls that are present now that show me that they pass tragically because I can taste the blood. Mm -hmm. And then one of them can I can feel the, the hitting of the head. 
um, which means that the soul immediately left the physical body. And then the other soul told me they took something that caused and attributed to their departure. It's great. And there, there's so many people mm-hmm. in this, yeah. in so, this I mean, office, I, well, too. I, yeah. I, and, and, I can't imagine. the reason why I said that was because I felt it yeah. the second I, w- I walked, walked in, in mm-hmm. here. Um, and, and I also realized that some people do not, <laughs> some people don't want to hear from their loved ones or right. they, they feel that they don't need to. And I always say to people, I, this isn't about people believing in what I do. That's never what I want. Yeah. I, it, it doesn't matter to me. I want them to believe in themselves. Right. And what you mentioned, like there's so many people here. Mm-hmm. My sister is very spiritual and she says this to me all the time and she's like very, she thinks she has some sort of <laughs> ability, but I actually she, believe her because she's absolutely. been to plenty of people who have told her, like, mm-hmm. you do. You just, like, have to channel it. And she kind of does a little bit, but um, I lived in the city for a while, and then I moved home to Long Island. And, as so- and I was, like, dealing with, like, depression, anxiety a lot in the city. And then as soon as I moved home to Long Island, mm-hmm. I felt a lot better. And she was like, you know, there's so many people in the city mm-hmm. and so many different energies that it can really affect your body. Do you feel that way? Like when you come into the city, a place like this, it's like so many different things are coming at you at once. Yes and no. So for me, I don't know if it's because subconsciously I know how to kind of control it. There are certain yeah. things that I can, and that when I'm then placed in a smaller space and I start to feel things, um, I know it's more specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not like I walk around the streets of New York and I'm like, hey, you over yeah, there yeah, across yeah, the yeah. street on Third yeah, Avenue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it's, it's not like that. Yeah. You know, I have to be in someone's space. And the reason why I chose to say what I said a little early is because I have certain things that spirit has to follow, you know, because I can always sense, I can sense a father energy, a mother energy, which are, could be grandparents, yeah, uncle, mm-hmm. someone like a parent to you. Um, but spirit then has to make me feel how they died. They have to bring me through that departure, with the, which they started to do. And then they have to show me why they need to deliver a message. Mm. So they have to show me or make me feel what the burden or guilt yeah. is that the person is carrying how so they you, can heal. Yeah, how, do you, how do you take care of yourself? Because I feel like when you're constantly giving mm-hmm. so much to other people, like you got to make sure you take care of yourself yeah. too. Well, I think uh, being a mom yeah. right, right. <laughs> it prepared me yeah. very well for yeah. this. Yeah, fair. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's really, really important. Like I make it uh, in my daily routine of meditating, making sure I clear my space, saging, making sure I protect my space. I take a lot of time to create a lot of amazing and positive energy for myself. I'm just very careful on who I choose to share it with. Mm-hmm. Now, do you ever get messages for your kids from people in your family who have passed it's very hard it's extremely hard uh it's interesting that you said that because i just lost uh one of my crew members uh over the weekend and i have on the ride in here i happened to be on the phone with her and it was very difficult for me to chant it's harder for me to actually channel when i know someone because then I'm like, yeah. well, am I remembering that? Is this my own thoughts? Yeah. So it's actually harder for me to read someone if I know them or know something about them. That makes that makes a lot of yeah. sense. Right. It it, it's because I feel like a lot of people question like, oh, where did you get this information from? Like if you yeah. knew and then they question everything about they're like, oh, you knew that already. Right. But yeah. but that that's the other thing. I also channel in a way, I've also learned that there are a lot of common ways people die mm, and yeah. there are common burdens and guilts that we carry connected to someone's departure. That's not my fault or spirit's fault. Right. So what I ask the souls of the departed to do is to validate it with something completely unique to that person. So they might bring up something that happened years ago to remind them of happier times. They'll bring up things that have happened since they've died. They'll bring up things that nobody else would know about, Mm -hmm. that they didn't share with someone. They communicate with that personality because, again, it validates that from the moment the soul leaves the physical body, they leave behind every and any disability and or ailment. And they have to communicate with laughter because that is the best medicine for the soul. And it's the number one thing we forget to do or don't know how to do. Yeah, I think that's when I went to a medium once and she just started laughing and I was like why are you laughing she was like she was like your grandma's pretty funny yeah. I, was yeah, like, yeah. I was like what is going on right now yeah. no but it's it's the greatest thing because how there would be no way she would know the personality mm. yeah 
you know and i can also feel um the heaviness and i i am just going to say this i did feel nervous when i started mentioning like my i started to get really really hot and then my heart started to pound really really fast so that's how i know um, it was meant to be said mm -hmm. for whatever reason why I said what I said and why I look in certain directions and I look at certain people and things like that. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. But, it's you know, and, and again, it's it's never, I will never call someone out. I, I never will say something to get a wow factor or to embarrass someone. Yeah, of course. Because that's yeah. not what I do. Yeah. If I say things and someone wants to... I know it's him, but yeah. he, I'm waiting for him to, I'm you know, he, what? <laughs> he he's, doesn't he's, know what's happening. But, <laughs> but it's, you know, because again, like, especially when someone passes suddenly and unexpected, um, we sometimes have all these thoughts. And again, when I say things, it's sometimes on how we feel, especially if we feel that we could have prevented someone's departure or if we were there more. Fair enough? Right? Uh. He has yeah, to turn he's like, oh, I'm no, I'm, I'm kind of confused, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when, um, because there is someone that passed of uh, of an overdose because they kept showing me the pill and then they um, dip it in like a powder, which is my symbol for fentanyl. I don't mm. know why it just has become that symbol. Mm. And then there was also uh, the car accident because I they hit me in the back of the head and then in the chest and then I started to taste the blood. So I taste things, I feel you things. You can so feel things and I can things feel things like that? Yes. That's crazy. So that is, and, and so you have I different felt, signals like that to know the way people passed. Right. So, and, that, and that's kind of what I, if you want to interpret it, learned um, or, or started to understand on why they would show it to me in that way. Can I ask you something about like, and it's it's dark and deep, but like suicide, I, um, I wonder mm -hmm. like how that goes when you're giving a reading, especially for people like mm -hmm. that are looking to connect with mm -hmm. someone who maybe ta had taken their own life. So a lot of times souls will, that's a very sensitive subject. Yeah. And I never want people to think that, oh, things are tough, I'm just going to take my own life and then it's yeah. going to be rainbows and right, right, on the right. other side. Yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't work like no. that. Yeah. A lot of times souls will come through and they will take responsibility for their departure. And a lot of times with the healing process, people have a difficult time healing because of the way that their loved ones died. So spirit has shown me time and time again, and I only talk about my experience with the souls of the departed have shown me. So souls will come through and say, I took my own life. I intentionally took my own life, but I tried many years before that and I didn't succeed. One gentleman told me he lived his life in a wheelchair for 15 years because it wasn't his soul's time to leave the physical mm. world. Um, so it is a, a very deep yeah. statement when we make it wasn't our soul's time to leave. The soul, know, the soul knows the destiny of its life. And from what Spirit has explained to me, there's a block of time that the soul has an opportunity to leave. Mm -hmm. That's why we have sudden departures uh, when someone gets to the end, end of their block of time. Sometimes when people live in a wheelchair or in a vegetative state or because they try to end their life and they didn't succeed, they will alter the way that they will live the rest of their life here in the physical world. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it's very interesting when you talk about the difference between like the soul mm -hmm. leaving the body and like that actually being part of you because I think yes. when we're just living right now, like I don't think of my soul right. as no. just being right, right. here, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But it is. But everything yeah. that I do is a part of my soul. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really, that's the core of who we are, mm -hmm. is our soul. Now, how did you end up doing the show, right? Because that's like... So that's an interesting story. So... Um, 2011, right, is when you guys started doing the show? That's when I started. So it was a little bit before that. So yeah. in 2009 is when uh, my manager, Courtney Mullen, um, she unfortunately had lost her dad a couple of years before that. And she had come for a reading and she had said that it had helped her so much that everyone should have the opportunity to experience that after the, lo the loss of a loved one. And she had worked for TRL at the time mm -hmm. and TRL had ended and she had asked me, uh, do you wanna do a TV show? So I'm like, oh, all right, I don't know, I'll film a couple of episodes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, go yeah. on with my life right. and you know. And uh, I never thought in a million years that I'd 
be on television for 10, 10 years, years and then be yeah. traveling on a tour bus all over the country yep, doing yep. live shows. Um, and that's really, that's how it came about. And I will never forget the first day of filming. Uh, the producer, uh, Jonathan's like, all right, the rule book's out the window. Just the rule is you show up at <laughs> Teresa's house. There's always a camera rolling and that's, that's it. it. Just yeah. go with it. Like there's <laughs> nothing else. And even people that are on the show, they're like, yeah, I'm, I'll be like, no one asked you. They're like, no one even asked me. They didn't even like check to make sure it was me. Like they yeah. just trusted that. And I'm like, well, that's the way that it is. I remember yeah. somebody from, um, I went to school with, I won't say the name, but a uh, police officer mm -hmm. tragically passed away and was on your show. The, the oh. wife was on your show and it was like, the biggest deal ever. We were like, wow, she's going on the Long Island media. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone tuned in. But it was just amazing to watch. Yeah. yeah. It, it really, it's something that, and especially after the pandemic, I say we've all, someone might not have lost someone, mm -hmm. but we've all lost something. Yeah, definitely. Over these past months, right? Yeah. And that's something else that Spirit offers is peace and faith. Yeah. And now you're doing a podcast. Hey, Spirit. Correct. What is happening on this podcast? Are you doing readings? Are you talking readings, like this? Virtually. Or are you just doing readings virtually? I do readings virtually. How does that work virtually? Virtually. Yeah, yeah. because there's a lot of people who do them over the phone yeah, or yeah. even just messaging. How do you get in tune with the person just over technology? Because just listening to that, yeah. I feel like is great. Like, right. Of course, you know, we've, we're have we so used to watching mm -hmm. your show. So it's right. kind of different when you're just, you can't physically see the person, even just for the listener. But that's the thing that I actually love about the podcast, podcast. is because mm -hmm. you're listening to these messages and sometimes someone can't respond. So right. especially if you're like watching the show, like you might just be watching their emotion, but to like hear it. Yeah. And then I think people are able to place themselves in their own situations for wherever they need to be in their healing process. And mm -hmm. I think that's why it's helping so many people. You know, and that, that was one of the silver linings for the pandemic was I was like, okay, how can I continue to help people? How can I continue to give people the, the, the encouragement and faith and not to give up and the comfort? And it's great because not only get, do I get to read people in the tri-state area, but people all over the world. We have people from uh, Australia on the yeah. podcast, Hong Kong. It really just is, is incredible. And it happens just like how it happens in person. I'd say the only thing is that I can't hug them because I'm right, such right. a, <laughs> like, I can't reach over like yeah, grab yeah, their yeah, hand yeah, and like yeah. hug them and that's the only that that's the only difference how um how do people get on the podcast like just I, we have a hotline it's 1-866-T Caputo and you call and leave a message and someone might just call you back <laughs> I think um, a lot of people are gonna call in I know, <laughs> I, know. This podcast. I know I would I, would I might so. <laughs> and you know you've gotten to do when you were on the, when the show was on Discovery Plus the beginning of this year mm -hmm. there was a lot of celebrities yeah that you got to work with how was that just like any, any other client. Are, any, any, I was going to say, any pressure for a celebrity reading? Yeah. It's no, 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 not at all. I mean, honestly, they're they're just like everyone yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. only difference is uh, that I find that they're more guarded. Yeah. Because of my life right, is in right, the public right, right. eye. They might be afraid of what the, you say, yeah. or, right? Like, but you know what? I use my gift for healing. Yeah. It's not, you know, there are some mediums and psychics out there that use their gift for, you know, what they work with the police. They, yeah. mm -hmm. they they do ghost hunting and things like that. Listen, I still live next door to my parents. Yeah. I'm 54 <laughs> and I sleep with a nightlight on. So <laughs> I'm not go, You're not ghost hunting. No, how, no, do you, no, no. how do you sleep at night? Um, I, like I, the genuine I, question, like how, there's a lot going on up it, there. It's hard. Including the hair. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot. I woke up like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I don't really sleep that great. Mm -hmm. So um, I usually just sleep for a couple hours. I'm usually waking up. Um, but yeah, I've I've always just I don't know any different. I've always been like this. So. Even yeah. like, do you look back to when you were younger? I know you said you would say that you felt different, but you mm -hmm. look even like your really early years. Like, do you just look back and think that's what was going on with me? Absolutely. Definitely, like I could never be in like closed spaces mm -hmm. or being around a lot of people because I would pick up the way that someone died. So I could be like losing my breath if someone died of the chest or a heart attack, like I'll lose my breath. Yeah. You know, if someone did take their own life by a hanging, I will feel mm -hmm. like uh, like something is pressing and choking me. Yeah. So it's very, 
Yeah. Insane. Mm -hmm. That's really crazy. I wish I, I, nobody wants this, but I wish I could sit here and ask you all the ways you feel the way somebody passes, oh, right? Because I, mean, I, no, I'm not going to do uh, that. Yeah. But it's like, I don't want to know that. No, I know, but it's just crazy <laughs> no, that you would you know, like, feel so, it. Like yeah. somebody who has cancer. Yeah. Like how would, like how would that come to you? Well, they'll show me, uh, well, it depends. Like where? It, it depends yeah. on the type of cancer. They'll show me, that the first thing that they do, if they want to show me that the cancer, if it was all over, they'll have, they'll stand in front, they'll just show me a silhouette and I will see red spots from head to toe. That means mm. that, that they were riddled with cancer. Uh, the red spots is the cancer. Then sometimes they'll just show me here. They'll show me like in the stomach, in the chest, and then they'll show me to the head. I will actually feel if someone had like an aneurysm mm. and if it traveled or like a blood clot and it went from the lung to the brain, that I will literally feel the pressure here. I will feel a sensation and then a sharp pain in my head. How do you know something's not wrong with you then if you're feeling these things? Because right? I go to the doctor yeah, every yeah. five minutes. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, I'll get heart palpitations all of a sudden. I think I'm having a heart attack. You feel these things constantly just from other people. Right. How would you know the difference? Well, that's the thing. That's why I suffered. You know, you were talking about anxiety yeah. and depression before. Mm -hmm. For years, I suffered with anxiety because I would be in a store and all of a sudden, I would literally right. feel like I'm having a heart attack. I would leave the store and then I'd be like, oh, I be feel fine. better. Yeah. But because I left right. the energy behind. Mm -hmm. So, and that happened once, like when I was learning to understand my gift that that actually did happen and I had to force myself to stay in situations I'll never forget it I was in in a bed bath and beyond and I was in the sheet aisle and I felt my heart and I'm like oh I'm, I'm having a heart attack and all of a sudden this older woman comes up to me and she and I hear in my head the ones on the left mm. I have no idea what that is and I'm like oh and this woman comes up to me and she says can I ask you your opinion which sheets do you like so of course I picked yeah, the ones on the, the left. left and she said oh she says those are the ones my husband would have liked I just lost yeah. my husband and he died of a heart attack suddenly and I need to change things but I still wanted to incorporate him in the room she says thank you I'm going to buy these and but that's how I learned so that yeah. then became my symbol of heart lungs yeah. or chest yeah, right. I will actually feel sometimes like I'm drowning yeah someone could have be it could be someone actually drowned you would not believe how many people drown. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be doing a live show and I'll, I'll literally feel like a barrel of a gun to my head and I'll say, who was shot? And you'll see hundreds Jesus. of yes. people yeah. raising their, yeah. it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. And I'm thinking no one's gonna die like that. And yeah. there's like 30 people fighting over the message. <laughs> what are the live shows like? Cause I, I feel like that's so interesting. My yeah. family has gone to a live show before and they've just like with a bunch of other people mm -hmm. and they somebody they said She's something. She's in a Huntington, right? The end yeah. of the yeah. some and shows in Huntington. Somebody said something on stage and it was to my family, mm -hmm. but they were obviously like, there's so many people in this room how do you know so mm. so this is how and i can only speak for myself yeah. so when i do a large group whether there's five people or five thousand in the room what i ask are the souls that can deliver as many messages at one time to kind of band together so i know with every message that i deliver it's not only healing the person that spirit has me speaking to but maybe up to a hundred families yeah. at one time and there'll always be that one little something that spirit will have me say that'll go yep that's me. Right. So, because you wouldn't, you, we tend to the things that we experience, we think everyone experiences those things and it just isn't so. Yeah. And, and we kind of take things for granted and oh, everyone dies like that, of course. Someone, I mean, spirit will literally show me someone sitting by their bedside, holding their hand, whispering in their ear, fixing their hair, telling them that it's okay to let go and to leave the physical world. And I didn't do that with my loved ones that died. Yeah. So for spirit to be so specific and then to say who came for them, to who greeted them mm -hmm. as they died, they, it's like, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. On st Still, after decades of doing yeah, what yeah. I do, <laughs> right. yeah. I'm still like- Still blows your mind. Oh my God, this is insane. Do you believe the things that I said tonight? Like, right. this is right. how, every li how every live show is. That's incredible. I hope people, I know, I saw, I was looking on your website, you got so many dates yeah. coming up. I'm sure you had to reschedule a ton, but between now and into done. 2022, I yeah. feel like there's a lot yeah. um, um, coming up. And you said you started off and you were like, you know, I'm, I'm just me and, and I'm still the same person, but yeah. you obviously have a lot of fame now. And I'm curious how you handle that, like on vacation or with your kids somewhere, like, and someone comes running up to you like, 
I, you gotta you gotta help me or like they they yeah, do like people you, do people ever like you bum rush that? you for readings they 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 bombard me but honestly not for readings okay that's nice okay. yeah majority uh, i would say about yeah 90 of the people time, who are just fans who aren't trying right. to like just, actually be like <laughs> it's even so yeah. weird to say fans it's like oh they, they're oh, fans. fans they're my fans. they're fans they're my family yeah oh, that's, that's nice. yeah oh, that's a nice. term yeah family yeah. because it's like it's so it's awkward like it's like i feel like they're people that support what i do and i mm. would not be where i am without them yeah. and i love and appreciate every single person out there that supports what I do. So when people do approach me, I am very grateful. Yeah. Uh, they really just want to thank me. Sometimes they want to tell me how what I do has helped them. Yeah. And they want a picture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, of course. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, throw the picture in there. It's yep. not a big deal. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I also learned in life that things are a big deal, only are a big deal unless if we make it a big deal. Right. And, you know, I appreciate everyone out there and, you know, and it's always like I'll be walking in the mall. I'm like, "Hey, Teresa," and I'll be in the airport. They're like, "Hey, Teresa." I'm like, "Hey," yeah. And everyone's like, it's "You know a, them?" I'm like, "No." I'm like, yeah. but "Quick interactions <laughs> are great." The fact that people yeah. just feel like that they can just say, "Be like, hey," you know, like an old friend. Yeah. And that's and the, always the best. And they always say that, like, oh, you know, how many people I see, but I would never come up to. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I to the fact that they feel that comfortable because you're so welcoming. Yeah, I it's mean, it's hair. just yeah, it's, it's just it's very not, inviting. It's just, you just know from yeah. the hair. I have one more question, or yeah. want you to explain to people listening because sure. I feel like this is a common misconception as well. Is like people think like psychic mediums, mm -hmm. right? They're like you can tell the future, but it, oh. isn't it more so somebody who has passed just has like advice kind of or or how would you explain that well like I, you said like the woman with the sheets was right like it was a question she wanted you to pick the sheets but her it was her husband was telling you to pick the ones on the left right but i think it depends because everyone i believe we all have gifts yeah. yeah it depends on how they use them or how they receive their information I am very clear when spirit brings up things that we're thinking about doing, wanting to do. Like, for example, if someone says, "Oh, they were gonna, they were thinking about getting a tattoo," that doesn't mean they drop everything and and go to the yeah. tattoo shop tomorrow. Never on any of my readings, unless if it's for healing purposes, is spirit to tell us what we should or shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. They simply bring up things to validate that they know what's going on, that they're still living life through our eyes that they are not missing out. They're not waiting for us at the cemetery. Yeah. I always say to people, I didn't bring them here with me. They came here with you. Yeah. I have my own dead people that follow me around <laughs> all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that is a, a very good point because I think people have a lot of misconceptions. Again, just what I do. I mm -hmm. can't speak for anyone else. Right. But I will never, uh, spirit's not allowed to come through and say, and to alter, because these are right, our free right. will choices. Right, yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. know, they can acknowledge and validate things, but yeah, that's about it. Well, Teresa, thank you so much for coming in here and talking to us. And everyone can listen to Hey Spirit. That's your podcast. Hey Spirit. It's a lot. It's very cute. <laughs> I feel like I got to like emphasize yeah. the Hey Spirit. Hey Spirit. <laughs> um, and when does when do those episodes come out? Uh, every Thursday. Every Thursday. And I'm sure you can listen wherever you listen to yeah. podcasts. Call into the hotline if you want to try and get on there and get a reading. Mm -hmm. Probably filled. I'm sure you... Listen, crazy <laughs> things have happened. I just recorded for yesterday. Someone did a last minute cancellation. Yeah. And I ended up reading uh, these two young girls and it happened to be the the birthday, I believe, of the father that had just died. Like it was just, yeah. there's no such thing right. as a coincidence. No. Right. Nope. So I always nope. say to people, it's, you, you're, you're interested, you want to see what it would be like, just call and leave a message. You never know what's going to yeah. happen. Or if not, if you're just curious to see what one of my live shows will be, just always right. check out my website, you know, TeresaCaputo.com. Yep. And I'm always, I'll be posting my uh, spring tour soon. So there you go. Super excited. I think this has been a very interesting conversation and thank you for coming. No, well, thank you for having me. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We hope you have an awesome weekend, and we shall talk to you on Monday.